This video will cover the mood stabilizers that are used in the treatment of bipolar disorder, but will primarily focus on lithium. Lithium was the first agent shown to be useful in the manic phase of bipolar disorder that was not an antipsychotic drug. It is approved as monotherapy for acute treatment of the manic phase of bipolar disorder, as well as maintenance and prevention of future episodes in bipolar disorder. Lithium is a monovalent cation that is closely related in terms of function and activity to sodium. It enters cells through sodium channels and can also substitute for sodium in the generation of action potentials and in sodium-sodium exchange across the membrane. It has two primary mechanisms of action in the treatment of bipolar disorder and the stabilization of mood. The first is that it blocks the regeneration of phosphatidyl inositol phosphate, or PIP2, which is a signaling molecule that is generated as part of the inositol phosphate signaling cascade. Said another way, Lithium suppresses inositol signaling through depletion of the PIP2 signaling molecule. The net effect of this activity is to inhibit adrenergic, muscarinic, and serotonergic neurotransmission in the CNS, as well as some activity or effects on dopamine neurotransmission, as demonstrated in this figure. In addition to its acute or immediate effects of suppressing monoamine neurotransmission in the CNS, lithium also inhibits the enzyme GSK3, or glycogen synthase kinase. This is a kinase that is critical to the property of neuroplasticity through enhanced transcription factor activity and modification of gene synthesis of various neurotrophic factors, such as BDNF and insulin growth factor, or IGF. Gene transcription is a process that takes some time, and therefore these effects of lithium are expected to take several weeks or more. There are some other postulated mechanisms of action of its effects in stabilizing mood, and these include modifying adenyl cyclase by decoupling G proteins from neurotransmitter receptors. This will become relevant when we talk about side effects in a moment. To summarize, lithium inhibits inositol signaling, which immediately decreases monoamine neurotransmission. It also inhibits GSK3, which leads to modification of gene transcription and subsequent changes to growth factors like IGF and BDNF. As a monovalent cation, the kinetics of lithium are relatively simple. It has fairly rapid absorption, fairly wide distribution, although in some cases it can be sequestered to a certain extent in bone, and is cleared by the kidneys. It undergoes no metabolism and therefore has no P450 interactions. Its half-life is about 20 hours. Lithium has a relatively narrow therapeutic index. In addition to causing some side effects due to its activity on G protein signaling, it also causes side effects because it can mimic other monovalent cations like sodium and potassium and disrupt various proteins and retransporters that require cation cofactors. At therapeutic do doses, the most common side effects of lithium are nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, some cognitive effects, some muscular rigidity and tremor, polyuria and polydipsia, which are increased urination and increased thirst in a diabetes-like effect, weight gain, and hypothyroidism. At toxic doses, these effects can progress to severe vomiting, tremor, all the way to CNS depression, arrhythmias, and possibly even seizures. The polyuria and hypothyroid effects may be due to uncoupling of G proteins from the receptors for vasopressin, in the case of polyuria, 
and thyroid stimulating hormone in the case of hypothyroidism. Despite these several side effects, one advantage of lithium is that it is devoid of autonomic blocking activity, as well as any activating or sedating effects. Other adverse effects of lithium in general can include the production of renal disease, a decrease in serum sodium or hyponatremia, and dehydration. These three things all can increase lithium toxicity and therefore dose reduction may be required in cases where lithium produces one of these three side effects. In general, lithium concentrations do require monitoring. In addition to monitoring of renal function and thyroid function, and this is to avoid toxicity over time. There are several drug physiology and drug-drug interactions to monitor with lithium. Serum lithium levels can be increased by NSAIDs, decreased salt intake, and sodium loss, for example, due to the use of a diuretic ACE inhibitor or ARB. Anytime sodium levels in the blood are decreased, serum levels of lithium can increase because its clearance is reduced. Serum levels of lithium can be decreased or sub-threshold therapeutic levels can occur when there is either increased salt intake or presence of caffeine. Lithium can increase the risk of serotonin syndrome when co-administered with SSRIs, SNRIs, triptans, and other serotonergic drugs. There is also expected to be higher than normal neurotoxicity with lithium if taken with a few specific drugs, including verapamil, diltiazem, phenytoin, and carbamazepine. In addition to lithium, there are a few anti-epileptic or anti-convulsant drugs as well as several antipsychotics that are approved for the treatment of various aspects of bipolar disorder. The anti-epileptic drugs approved for bipolar disorder include carbamazepine, valproic acid, and lamotrigine. Take a moment to review your notes on these anti-epileptic drugs from IP7. They have the same mechanism of action as described for epilepsy, However, their effects in bipolar disorder may actually also be due to GSK, GSK3 and or inositol signaling. Their specific mechanism of action for therapeutic benefit in bipolar disorder is not known. Carbamazepine and valproic acid can be used to treat episodes of acute mania and also to prevent future manic episodes, whereas lamotrigine is more commonly used to prevent future depressive episodes. Lamotrigine is also the safest mood stabilizer in pregnancy. There are also several antipsychotics approved for the treatment of bipolar disorder. These are primarily the second generation antipsychotics due to their lower risk of extrapyramidal side effects. There are several agents that are approved for the treatment of mania, or maintenance of bipolar disorder treatment. And these include aripiprazole, olanzapine, ketiapine, risperidone, and ziprasidone. There are also a few antipsychotics approved for the treatment of depressive episodes in bipolar, bipolar disorder, also known as bipolar depression. And these include the combination of olanzapine and fluoxetine and loracidone. In general, the antipsychotics are safer in pregnancy in bipolar disorder than lithium, valproate, or carbamazepine, although lamotrigine is still considered to be the safest. Now is a good time to also review the pharmacology of lithium in the Speed Pharmacology Antidepressants YouTube video that was posted previously. Scan the QR code to access the video directly and start at minute 16 to review the pharmacology of lithium.